Hello everybody, I'm Mas Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics and today I will show you a old Kona elevator control box uh, which includes both the uh, logic control and the power electronics. So let's take a closer look at the unit itself. As you can see it's about a quarter of a square meter in size. It's a little flat meant for wall mounting. On the front we have a sticker here which actually uh, explains how to change a fuse in the intermediate circuit if there is no power on it. Seems a little strange that uh, somebody else than trained technicians should know this. We have a warning sign that says do not touch anything before the drive has discharged. At the top of the control board we have a power supply which is minus 12 to plus 12 volt. As we can see there are some different uh, silk screens for inductor sizes so this uh, power supply can be scaled up to something that needs higher currents than, th currents than this uh, small unit. If we go down further we have a Intel 81 96 microcontroller. It is uh, the uh, N80C196 KC20, which is a 16 bit 20 megahertz microcontroller, which was uh, discontinued in 2007. So, and Intel said there were no direct replacements for these controllers, so, complete redesigns would have to be made. This drive is apparently from 1999, as we can see printed on the two 1 megabyte EEPROMs up here. Above it we have a zero power RAM module, which basically just is a 256 kilobyte RAM module with a lithium battery on it. Above here we have three 8-bit DACs. Around uh, the microcontroller we have some input-output peri peripherals for uh, all kinds of connectors that you use uh, with elevators, buttons, sensors, and all that kind of switches to tell which level it is on and so on. We have a RS-232 interface. We have some analog interfaces over here. And over here we have a plug connector that goes down to the uh, main power electronics board. This uh, board has a few peculiarities if we look closer. If we see up here, it has a text that says Mocha Current Measurement. And over here we have U phase, V phase, and W phase, along with three potentiometers. I'm not sure if this is meant to adjust the phase of how the motor is driven, but considering we have the digital to analog converters here, it might be something we write that is written down to the inverter itself for the phase angles. Ang angles. If we look, we have here some uh, LEDs, RBR, clear, MBE, DCL, I'm not too sure what those designations are. We have a uh, pin header here that is named offset check. Down here we have also a potentiometer called offset and we have another one with gain written on. These are probably meant for controlling the, the speed of the elevator or adjusting the offset of the elevator. Up under here we have a text that says test program and another two pins where it says record out. One thing that really baffles me is there is a small switch that says full power. I'm not sure if I should be wor worried or just think that's awesome. With the lid off, we can see that this is pretty much a straightforward inverter, as you can see for any motor drive. There is a huge input filter, 
There is some DC bus caps. There is a driver section for the IDPT. There is a three-phased IDPT module underneath the, uh, the PCB here. The outputs go through three large inductors and the output goes through one of these three contactors to the motor out terminal on the back. This plug is for the brake module, which can be seen here. Uh, it is basically just a relay with two large resistors next to it. The two other cables we have going out of the back here is for the brake, which is pretty important in elevators. And those two cables are connected down here on the uh, PCB, one of the terminals are designated DC+. Plus. As you can see we, here we have the LED on the uh, DC bus bank to show if there's any charge on the capacitors. As you can see it also warns here, danger, 400 volts on the board. And another thing that had me wondering was this text, soldering direction. But it must have to do with this probably being hand soldered in some way, that it had to be done in a particular order to fit in. Another thing I noticed are these um, large stud screws, which up here, I think this is the bridge rectifier. And down here we have for the IDPT module that it seems like this has been made for being serviceable and to change it out in case of a failure. So with everything taken apart we can take a look at the, the IDPT and the rectifier bridge and what else is underneath the board. As we can see it is a uh, OIPEC three-phase module. It's a BSM 50 GD 120. So it's a 15, 50 amp, 1200 volt IDPT module. The uh, bridge rectifier, it's an uh, XS. And as you can see on the schematic on the side, it both has a three-phased rectifier bridge, but also a brake chopper built into the module. On the top of the board, at the middle, we have four 0 0.33 microfarads snubber caps. The current measurement uh, is only do, done on two phases with the Hall effect sensors. And other than that, we have some MOVs for over voltage protection of the uh, three phased input. Among the things that I got out of this inverter, there is a three phased 12 ampere filter, quite large for the uh, rating. There are three 230 volt contactors, a small brake module with a relay beneath, not sure if that's useful for anything, two 220 ohm 400 watt, ah, maybe not 400 watt, seems something like maybe 20, 40 watt resistors, DIN rail, some uh, feed through terminals, three inductors but probably not useful for much, a little screws and fixings, to a reefer capacitors, 1000 microfarad, 350 volt DC. Yeah, probably good for some experiment, but has some age to it, so probably not in such a good state. But that was uh, the teardown of a elevator controller. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.